Hey everybody, back with another video, of course, that I wasn't planning on doing. Um, I had this versus board. Actually, I had this other versus board. Um, this was came out of my red tent, and it was um, versus tennis. And I wanted to power it up on the bench, and I did. And it didn't power on right, um, or it didn't boot up. And I just pushed down on all the chips, and it booted right up. Not a problem on the bench. Um... Actually, my bench setup for the Versus is a little wacky. I have this Mark Spath um, Nintendo Classic to Versus adapter. And then I have Mike's Arcade Nintendo uh, to JAMA adapter. So that's kind of interesting. But So this that br brings me to this board and why I started something happened and I got interested and I wanted to share something. So um, I think I bought this board a couple years ago from CoinOp Warehouse. And... It was filthy, and chips were or were in bad shape. I mean, like, kind of rusted, corroded. And I did... I'll link to this. Let me see if you can see. Yeah, so you can see kind of... Right there. Some Still some dirt and stuff that I didn't really get a good job of getting. Um, and then I basically, like, uh, Jason... What is it? Um, RK Jason, I think, did a video of kind of uh, using toilet bowl cleaner and I think one other guy that's on Clove, um I'll link to his video I can't think of it right now Canadian guy um, sorry man but anyway so I did the toilet bowl cleaner clean up the board it looks pretty good but the chips were still pretty bad and so then I was using Andrew B's method of using a, a Dremel to clean some of these chips and test them in my EEPROM burner and that's what I kind of wanted to show. And then I figured, shit, I might as well go ahead and troubleshoot the board if it doesn't boot up. So I don't know how long this video is going to be. But I've already cleaned some of these chips. And I wanted to show you um, something on the, the EEPROM programmer that I have. The B&K uh, 864. Or ELNEC ELNIC or something like that. So let's go to uh, the program burning station. And I'm going to show you. Uh, a few okay, things. ignore these chips at the top. Those are from uh, a Missile Command 2708s. But basically, I cleaned these chips. I think I first cleaned them, and I know it's going to be difficult to see probably, but I cleaned these chips with... Um, what did I do with them first? Um, Tarnex. Tarnex, and I don't think these are the right um, type of metal that Tarnex would clean. It did get them better, though. Um, and I cleaned them with Tarnex first. And then, like this one you can see is a lot shinier. I started cleaning with the Dremel with a wire brush. And I'm, I'm going to show that in a second on one of these things. Um, but what was interesting, in this one you can see the pins were so bad that a couple of pins didn't make it. So like these two pins here I'm going to have to repair. I'll probably do that in this video just to see if I can get this EEPROM to work. Um, but that's how bad the pins were. Now they're, they're much better now, um, obviously. Um, after using the Dremel and stuff on them, but still not perfect, and that's what I'm going to show here in a second. All right, hope, hopefully this is zoomed in well enough here. <laughs> you don't need to really see the whole thing, um, but hopefully it's clear. So, basically, these are 2764 out of the Versus, and I'm just going to put in, this is, um, this is Hogan's Alley, I think, and this is uh, pin, Chip... What is that? 2A or something? 2A or 8A it says. Hogan, Hogan's Alley. And one of the things that's kind of cool about this um, B&K 864 or the ELNEC, Elnick, Elnick, something like that, is you can go to device options, operation options, and you can see here it says verify after reading um, and that's enabled so after I read the chip I'm not even writing it and verifying it after I read the chip it's going to you know read the contents into buffer and then it's going to verify against that buffer um, and read it again and it's going to verify it twice and by default it's going to do it at you know VCC plus 10 percent and VCC minus 10 percent which is basically 5.5 volts and 4.5 volts. So I'm actually going to do this um, with the chip that I just put in there. What is that? 2.8A. And I, I know this might be boring to some people. I don't know. For some reason, I find it interesting. I don't, 
I don't know why. Device insertion error. So, like, it doesn't even like me putting in it, this chip in there. It says bad contact at pin 21. So I'm going to put that one to the side. We're going to come back to that one. Um, this one is definitely one I cleaned. Looks looks pretty good, right? I mean, you can see where I got the wire wheel on, on the chip itself. This is uh, 1B. 1B or something else. Or 6B. So let's uh, read this. And there you go. We get an error. It says verifying device at VCC max error. Okay. And this, here you can see in the log, it says I got a buffer check sum. So it was able to read the chip, but um, but we had a an error when reading it at VCC max. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to save this file. Oh my gosh. Save, there we go. And we're going to call this um, 1B. Save that. Let's open up ROM ident. Browse. There's our 1B. Open. Submit. And obviously it says Hogan's Alley. Um, I think you can see that, yeah. Hogan's Alley, does it say 1B? Yeah, 1B or 6B. So we know it reads good, but it's not verifying um, correctly. So I'm just gonna put, not a full check mark, I'm just gonna put like um, a half of a check mark, I guess, or something. So I'm just gonna go, just a line, and put that to the side. All right. And then, let me read this one. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to verify on camera each one of them, um, but I just want to read a couple more. Okay, and so this one was able to verify, as you can see here, it read the device, verified device at 5.5 volts, verified device at 5.5. Um, I mean 4.5. So I'm going to put a full full check mark on this one. I mean, we know this one's good is good to go, right? It's above and beyond what the other ones were. So I'm gonna do that for all the chips and get um, some check marks or half check marks or set aside the ones that failed um, device insertion. I just, just show, <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna do this, but um, I'd put in another chip. This is, um, what, 2A, this is 2B, 2B, um, and it says bad contacts at pins 15 and 22. And just to give you kind of, hopefully, if you can see, I mean, that's, that's what the chip looks like. I mean, this one, I don't think, oh, duh, this is, <laughs> I'm surprised that there's two pins actually broken. So, duh, there's got to be um, ones that are broken on that. So, all right, we, we know that. That makes sense. I got to fix that one. All right. All right, so this one here has all its pins, and it failed the pin continuity check. So, I'm going to take my Dremel here. Now I have this big wire brush. I actually have used, I was using um, this one, which is a little bit smaller, and this one as well. Um, but I just think that this bigger one I like a little bit more. So this is going to be loud. Sorry guys, but um, I'm just kind of doing this on the chip. Uh, and trying to get them all, all shiny. And so I'll spare you too much of that. I'll spare you too much of that, but I'm basically going to do this and then um, see if I can get it to read in the, the EEPROM burner. Alright, so I've cleaned this one again, um, but... I don't think I'm going to be able to get it much better. I'm definitely not going to spend, you know, hours and hours <laughs> trying to get this thing to work. But here's one of the ones that verifies fine. I even verified it on ROM ident. But if I read it at plus or minus um, 10%, it's definitely bad. Now let's go to our device options and just say, um, let's just do it at plus or minus 5%.
Okay, it still doesn't like that. All right, but it still reads fine. I think that chip is going to be fine, but it is not, you know, at least up to the spec of probably, I don't know, I'd have to look at the data sheet. This is a TMS 2764. I bet the the manufacturer says to verify it at minus at 4.5 volts and 5.5 volts, but obviously as your voltage drops lower, this chip is not going to read all of the data um, or verify the data correctly. Um or read the right data, I guess you should say, because it even tells you the address and what what's in buffer and what's in the device. So this is another one that um, failed at plus or minus 10 percent. I'm gonna read it. Okay, and this one, see, passes at plus or minus five volts, plus or minus five percent, <laughs> or whatever, um, which is what 0.25 volts. Um, this one right here and I, both of those are good so I did let's see where's the chip when I was cleaning this one here unfortunately one of the legs was just too weak and broke off and it broke off on a spot that I definitely can't repair so 2a is gonna have to be reburned sorry 2a is gonna have to be reburned um, and I'm just going to trash it because I can't I can't fix that and it's not worth my time trying to. Now this one here I am going to solder a couple things on. Let's let's do that real quick. Fix fix this EEPROM. See if I can save it. All right, I'm going to try to do this while working behind the camera here. I didn't even uh, let's see here. Whoops. Got it on the wrong thing. Basically, I don't know how this is going to work because I'm working from kind of far away because I'm behind the camera, but just going to stick this into my socket if I can. Of course I bent the pen, Jesus. All right, basically, if you can see that I finally got it um, in there, I haven't soldered it yet, but basically just put in, you know, the um, one of the leads from like a capacitor or something that fits, stick it in the socket so we can solder it. I'm gonna do that off camera because I can't work around this camera right now and just solder it and then clip off the leads real quick. All right, so I have the one chip that I soldered soldered into the socket. I think I might still be able to remove it, but I might just leave it in the socket. I mean, a, the socket is cheaper than an EEPROM. Is it? Kind of. I don't know, machine sockets. I might. Anyway, it's an interesting experiment. So probably not worth the time than just trashing the EEPROM, but eh, you know, as much as you can save the best, I guess. Um, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna let's refine our programmer here. And device options. Stick with the ten percent. All right, and it fails to verify at that level. Let's go ahead and change that to. 5%. Alright. Fails that. Let's save the file. This is 2B, I think. 2B. Open up ROM ident. Ah. Not good enough. This thing is not working. So maybe the data was bad to begin with, or I'm just not making good enough contact. 
So here's another one that I just put in a socket. This is one that we couldn't verify at plus or minus 5%. Let's try it. Nope, still can't, but it does verify correctly. So I guess, well, obviously I have two bad chips that I need to reprogram, but four chips out of the six I was able to basically clean up and get them a lot better than what they were. I just thought it was interesting to show. Here's that chip that I um, soldered the legs onto. Let me try it without the socket. Mm, I'm not like that. And obviously we can turn off turn this off. We can say verify after reading is disabled. Let's read it. Okay. Read it fine. Save to be back. Browse to be. Yeah, that ROM's trash. All right, All right I just right finished back. programming the other ROMs, and you can see it verified at min and max. Did that on both of them. If I scroll up through my log. Somewhere, right? Verify twice. Uh, ah, whatever. You get the idea. The right, program. So I have everything on the board, and honestly, I haven't done a lot of research yet. I don't know if these are supposed to be on the six and eight. If you only have one game in, if they're supposed to be on this side of the board and six and eight, or if they're supposed to be on this side of the board at one and two. No idea. Don't know if the CPU works. Don't know if pick works. Their other chips are still pretty pretty bad on there if I can get out of the light on you so but there's my little setup here with the whacked out multiple JAMA connectors and all that um, but let's go ahead and power it on see what I get oh my god it doesn't sound great but it actually booted right up was not expecting that something is going on with the sound I'll just turn that down Maybe the colors are off a little bit. Um, probably, right? The colors might be off a little bit. I mean, but that's all I did to this board. This board was just booting up to a blue screen. And all I did was... Oh, man, I'm, that's pretty cool. Should I, should I film more? I don't know. I have to do some more research. But that's just kind of interesting. <laughs> just cleaning the board, using the toilet bowl cleaner... Cleaning all the ROMs, getting cleaning the, the legs on the CPU chip, um, deoxid on the uh, on the um, sockets and stuff, and the damn thing is booting. I mean, it just looks does not look right. I don't think like the colors seem the tint or something is. I don't know enough about these games that I know they don't quite look like others. Maybe. The sound is definitely messed up. Ooh. All right, so let, I will troubleshoot some more. I don't know if this. Will, let me check how long this video is. Um, if I don't end it, if I end it here, stay tuned to part two. If I continue to go on, I will cut this out.